here we have a Dyson V11 Altice. I'm going to open it up and show you how to clean it. So first, we need to remove the battery. There's a red button here. So if you purchase this product, I purchased it in Australia just for this video and it comes with two batteries. So I don't know about anywhere else in the world, but yeah. So to remove the bin, you need to press this red button, pull it back. There's also this red button here. This red button stops the bin from flying out when you open it. So you need to push it down so you can remove the bin. So here, there's a, that's the guide rail that you have to put your bin back in. So we're gonna work on the bin first. So on the bin, there's two rings here, the inner and outer ring. So to remove the ring, we need a prying tool. So a screwdriver, a flathead screwdriver is good enough. So with your flathead screwdriver, put it in, pry it out until it's enough for you to hold on to. Then you can start removing it. It's just like an elastic band, nothing special. You don't have to be that careful as it can't, it shouldn't be able to break. So looking at this ring, rubber ring, there's a flat side and the rest is round. The flat side goes in the inside where the hinge is. So you want to insert it in here first. The ring is bigger than the gap, but since it's rubber, it's um, malleable. So you can just push it in and go in. So once you have aligned your ring correctly, then we're going to move to the inner ring. Don't remove the inner ring if you don't have to, as it's difficult to put back in. So with your hands, you can just lift it up and it'll come up just like that. It comes out really easily, but to put it back in, it's actually quite difficult. So to put it in, we just need to push it back down. So with your hands, push it down. Don't push it down too hard, as if you push it down too hard, when you go around, it's going to be really difficult to push it down evenly. So we want to push it down incrementally until all of it is down, then we'll push harder to get it into deeper. So now that I've already been around, I'm just pushing it down harder so it can go in deeper. Next, we're gonna remove the back part. There's one screw here. You need a Torque T8 screwdriver to remove this. So here, I'm just showing you that uh, Torque T8 screwdriver. For this vacuum, you only need a Torque T8 screwdriver and a Phillips head screwdriver to remove all the screws. Now that we remove the screws, you're going to need your prying tools. So you need your guitar pick like prying tools. You need a few of them. So you're going to need to insert the guitar <coughs> picks between the inner and the outer clear plastic. So there's tabs here and there's insertions. The tabs are inside the insertions to hold it in. So the idea is it stops you from pulling out. So what we need to do is we need to insert our guitar pick close to these <coughs> um, grooves or insertions. So what we want to do is we want to expand it out slightly that um, your grooves, <coughs> your grooves don't um, get hooked on anymore to the clips or the clips don't get hooked on anymore. After that happens, we can now remove our inner ring. So you just can check on the progress to see if your guitar pick is touching the clip. So once it's touching the clip, you can just pull it out and now it comes out. Please note it comes out diagonally. So here, <coughs> this is the screw part. The screw part goes in first and needs to align with the uh, screw hole. Once that's in, you just push it in and you should hear a clicking sound and you can reconfirm this by looking at all the holes or the insertion, um, insertion parts or the clip parts to see if um, they align. So just going to back here, I just realized that I didn't push this ring in enough. So to do so, I'm going to get my guitar pick to help me push it down deeper. Please don't get a screwdriver. If you get a screwdriver, you might actually poke a hole in this or rip it. So get something weak. 
or can't do damage to your rubber ring, which is what I'm using a guitar pick for. So when I'm pushing it, I'm just checking if it's reaching the bottom. So now that I'm done, if you look at this, you can see the gap is a lot less compared to previously. Now we're just going to go back to this. You will now need a <coughs> Phillips head screwdriver to shove in this hole so you can pry this inner ring out. Oh. So you need a small Phillips head screwdriver, oh sorry, a flat head screwdriver to pry it out. So insert your flat head screwdriver in, it actually has to go quite deep. After it's in, you can just lift it up, tilt it up slightly, and you'll be able to pry this open. Now that's out, you can get your red ring out to clean it. Please note on the red ring, there's actually grooves in it. Here on the bottom plastic, there's cut out grooves, and on the red ring, there's protrusions that protrude out. There's five of them. You need to align them correctly. If you don't align them correctly, you're not going to be able to put the casing back on. So once it's aligned correctly, we get our ring. You see a cut out there. That cut out goes to where your screw hole is. So align that. Once it's aligned, you can now push it down. If you do it correctly, it should be quite simple for you to insert it. As I have done it incorrectly, I have to readjust it. So I'm standing up to get more force as I was struggling to put it in. Generally, this is an easy task. It's probably because um, my vacuum is brand new and never been used before, so it has no wear and tear on it, so it's a bit tight to put it in correctly. My hands just started to hurting, so I'm just trying to use a different method to push it down. It should not be this hard for you. Please note, it's just a special. I'm um, just a special case for this. So if you're having difficulty, make sure you um, check that you realigned it correctly. So my hands were sore, so I had to take a break. And now that I've taken a break, I came back, and it's a lot easier now. Now to put it back in, we're going to align your screw hole with the screw hole on the bin. So you put it in diagonally first, and after it's in, you can push the bottom in. You just wedge, it just comes, you just force it in, and it'll come in. We're going to go around the bin to check if it, the clips are in correctly. Now that's incorrectly, we're going to put your T8 screw, uh, screw back in.
Now that's done, we're going to move that away and move on to our next. So we need to remove the filter. And after this, we're going to remove the cyclone and the rail. So you need a long screwdriver to do this part. So this is how long the screwdriver needs to be. You need a Phillips head screwdriver to do so. So there's actually five screws for the cyclone and two screws for the rail. So I'm removing two screws for the rail first. All these screws and use uh, you use a Phillips head screwdriver to remove them. After you remove the two screws, you just pull out the rail and it comes off. So now we're just pulling that off. Next, we have to remove the fire screws to get rid of the cyclone, or to remove the cyclone from the motor head, or from with the motor housing. Now we're removing our last screw, you can see it coming apart. So after you remove the screw, just pull it apart and it comes off just like that. So first, we're going to remove this rubber ring. You just remove this rubber ring by pulling it out. <coughs> There's no clips or anything. <coughs> please note, <coughs> the rubber ring does have grooves on it. So please match your grooves with your vacuum cleaner and put it in correctly. If you don't put it in correctly, it, the seal is not going to be correct. And you might lose suction power because of this. Next, <clears throat> we're going to have to remove four screwdrivers. These are torque T8 screws that you need to remove.
So I'm just showing you the screws are quite long. Next, we're going to remove the rubber ring on the bottom, the black rubber ring. So this rubber ring is to seal with <coughs> to use to seal with your um, bin and your cyclone. So you can use a pry tool to pull it out, or you can just use your hands. Just stretch it, and it comes out. Please note this only goes in one direction. Ensure if you put it in the wrong direction, you're not going to have a proper seal. Therefore, to put it back, just put it over and stretch it out, and it should just go back in like that. Next, we're going to need our guitar picks. With our guitar picks, we're going to have to insert it into this square. So the idea is the square and the filter part sits flush with each other. Therefore, you cannot pull it out as <coughs> it blocks the way. Therefore, we need to put our prime tool to lift up our filter, the silver part, so that it can go over the top of the square, the inner square. So first we need to in, um, insert our prying tool, our guitar pickish, all the way to the bottom. So this lifts it up and gives us a gap. We need to do the same for the other side as well. So sometimes because you do one side, it makes it tight. Therefore, it's hard to insert your guitar pick on the other side. So just do whatever you need to do to achieve the result. So here, I insert the guitar pick on the other side as well. So now that since I have two guitar picks, I can now pull this out. You're going to need a bit of force. And that might happen. That's OK. This is just plastic anyway, there's no parts that can be broken, so you should be fine. So to put it back, we need to align our square and our screws on the bottom. Use that as a guide to put it in straight. Once you have aligned it, you can push it down. So just showing you here, as you can see here, there's actually a ledge as the filter is on the outside, so it's raised. So once you put it on the inside, they're both leveled, and this which this makes it difficult for you to remove. So here you go. Just to show you, so how you know it's incorrectly is when your square is aligned correctly. So we're just going to remove it again. So insert your guitar picks all the way to close to the cyclones as possible. When you do this, you'll see it raising, you see the part rising up. Once it's rise up, you can now pull it out as it can't get stuck anymore. You can leave your rubber ring out if you want and deal with it later in case it gets it falls out again because you do stuff. So we've got a few screws that we have to remove here. There should be four screws. Please note one of these screws are actually special. It actually connects to the square that we originally talked about. Removing that screw allows you to remove a plastic piece around the square or it's actually the square itself that allows you to remove.
So now that we remove all the screws, we can take this apart like that. And we need to remove the connector. But this also now allows us to remove the square part as well. We can take this square out. You don't need to leave it in. Please don't, you need to put the square in first and then the top in and then a screw in. There's a specific order it must go in. Now to remove the connector, this is going to be a bit difficult. I just have to go get my tool to remove the connector. So the tools is two chopsticks and a hammer. So the idea is you need to put the two chopsticks inside at where the connector is. So it's actually a bit difficult and I can't actually show on video properly as it's inside. So you can see the connector on the outside, it's black. So what you're doing is you're trying to push the connector from the inside out. So what you need to do, you need to get your two screw um, chopsticks, make sure they're flat at each end. And the idea is to align it with your connector and use that. And use that to push your connector upwards. So what you're gonna do is you're actually gonna use a, need a hammer. You can try this, you can try it without a hammer and try to force it up. It actually might not go through. So now I just have to go and get my hammer. Please note there's a video, there's two videos on my channel showing you two methods of how to remove the connector. If you want more details, you can watch that. Since I already created those videos, I'm not gonna go into details about removing the connector in this. Now that I've got my hammer, So what I'm gonna need to you're gonna need to do is put your two chopsticks inside. Please note, make sure your chopsticks both ends are flat, not pointy, lest you might damage your connector. So now I have two uh, two of my chopsticks on either end of the connector, and it's lined correctly. I'm gonna use my hammer. You're going to probably have to hit harder than I am. So if you hit hard enough, it should push out the connector like this, as you can see. Please note, doing this damages your connector a bit, but it's how it's going to work. There's only this method or the other methods in my video. You can watch someone. Please note, Dyson does not replace or sell replacement connectors for you. And here you go, so this part here, there's on the left and right side of the connector, there's there's tabs stopping you from pushing it out. So what we did by inserting our chopsticks and hammering it is we uh, damaged those tabs or removed them. So here you go, as you can see. So to open the connector, there's a flap on one side. And this is what you see. As you can see, there's the white cable goes inside and the black cable goes outside. So to put it back in, just put it back in and close the door. Remember, you might have to insert your cable in deeper. And I'm just showing you the sides again, where the flaps are, they are broken. So to open up, open the flap up. So there's the white cable and the black cable. So now you can just remove it by removing the top off and it comes out like this. So I'm just going to show you again without the top on. So if the connectors are not in deep enough, you won't be able to close the door because the door has these protrusions sticking out. So if you have trouble closing your door, it means your cables are not in deep enough or not facing the correct direction. So here's just a demonstration to show you how, so the idea is you want to get your chopstick. 
You want to get two of your chopsticks here and here. And then with inside, with that, you get your hammer and knock it out. So next, to remove this part here, there is actually four screws. We also need our torque screwdriver to remove it as well. So once you just remove your screws, you can just lift up, you can just lift this up and the white part should fall through. In the previous Dyson's V11 and V10, you actually had to cut the white part or else it won't fit through the hole. But for the V11 Altice, they have um, upgraded this and made the hole bigger so you don't have to cut it. So just to show you, this is the hole you insert it in, the smaller one on top. Insert your wires through. Once the wires through, you can pull it, pull it up, and put your housing or put this plastic thing back in to the cyclone. Next, you can just lift this up and separate it. It comes apart. There's actually four or five pieces here. You can just pull it out. If you pull it out, you'll see this is what you get. So you get the inner cyclone, the outer cyclone, the red gasket. So here, there's actually guide rails that you have to guide it in, or else it doesn't go in properly. So that's the guide rails. So here we got the red red gasket and the black gasket. The inner gasket's black and the outer one's red. So be careful with these. If you rip these, there's also no replacement parts for those. They aren't that weak though, so you should be fine. Please uh, note the orientation of the gaskets as they need to go in the same way. So now I'm going to just put the gasket back on. Before you remove the gasket, please make sure you have a good look at it so you know how it's supposed to go in properly. So with all these, after disassembling all this, generally I'll bring it back to my backyard and use my garden hose and spray it. So now that you've finished the gasket part, remember to align these two together and push it down. Please note you don't want to push it all the way down. You do want to push it all the way down so you can test it if it fits properly. But if you push it all the way down, all the parts don't come together properly. So they all need to be halfway each. So now we have to put this part in. 
So remember to align your rail, your inner back, um, cyclone with your outer cyclone on the rail. Once that's done, you can just put it on top and remember to align where the bottom is. So to put it in, if you put them all flush and all the way in, you'll notice it doesn't fit in. So what happens is you need to remove the gasket part a bit up or loosen up the gasket part. So we just have to push out the gasket part slightly so it can connect properly. Once it's connected, you can now put it in and it should be flush. So just to show you, you need a slight gap or else it doesn't all connect properly. It's just the way they designed it. So I'm just demonstrating again. So you also do it this way, it's a bit harder. So once everything is aligned, you push it in together, it should be flush. We now need to insert our cable back through the hole and put it back down. We need to put our screws back in. So how do you know which screw goes in which hole? Um, if you forgot, you can use your gray filter to check or you can lift up this piece to see where the screws go. So if we align our gray filter, we can see which screw, uh, which holes the gray filter takes up and we want to take up the other ones. So it's best to take note of um, where the screw holes are before you remove them. In case you stuff up and put it, assemble it, you're going to have to disassemble it just to correct it. Now I'm done, I'm just going to put my square back in. But before you do that, you want to reconfirm if you put the right screws in the right hole. So get your grey filter or silver filter and align it with the bottom or the cyclones to ensure if you've got the correct holes. So we need to insert in this hole. So follow the hole where your connector was originally and insert the cable through there.
now that I have aligned it correctly. So we got our two cables out. We need to put our connector. Remember the white cable goes where the hinge the hinge is, and the black cable goes closest to where the clip is to open the door. Room to align it correctly. Once aligned correctly, pull on it a bit to see if it's stable and connected properly. Once it's correct, you just push it in and it should click and you just poke at it to see if it moves. So next, I'm just going to put my door back in. Oh my, sorry, my um, my square thing. So you're going to have to lift it up slightly so you can insert the square thing. I actually forgot to do that before. So now we need to insert our four screws. These four screws are your Torque T8 screwdrivers as well. So this one is the small ones. The long ones only go at the bottom where the cyclones are. Now we've screwed it in properly, we need to get our rubber ring and put it around. You can put it around now, it's actually quite easier than when you put the grey or oh, the silver filter on. Make sure the flappy part is facing upwards. Next we need to put our silver filter on. I think I've been calling it grey the whole time through the video, but it's actually silver. So to do so, remember to align it correctly, align it with your square and align it with your screw hole. Push it down. So go around the sides and push it down individually, offset it slightly and so it goes in. You know it's in properly if it's flush. Now we need to put our long screws back in. So we know it's long screws because these screws uh, go to the cyclone part. And now we're done with the cyclone 
thing. Next, we're going to move to the motor. So with the motor, you actually can remove the motor and everything. But to do so, you need to remove two screws and remove this white cap. On the newer models of the vacuum cleaners, that's all you can do. Originally, they wouldn't glue everything down. But after removing this white cap, they decided to glue everything. I guess it's a way to stop people from tamping ring fit and then returning it for a refund. If you watch my Dyson V11 V10 video my, on my channel, you'll be able to see that how to disassemble the trigger and the motor. So here, there is actually two, um, two clips. You need to use your prying tool to lift it up. So now that we removed the right cap, we need to push the power down, just push down on it, and it will should pop up, uh, the white part should start moving up. And there you go, that's how you remove it. And here's our problem. So on the newer models, they started to glue everything down here. So you need to remove these two screws to remove the motor and get to the trigger. Since it's glued down, I'm not going to remove it. If you want to watch part of this or need this part, please watch my older video, which has it. So now I'm just going to reassemble it. So you need to put the power connector through the hole again. Just pull on it until it goes through all the way. Clip back our white housing cover. We need to put our two torque screwdrivers back in. Next, we need to put our cyclone back in. To do so, just slide it in. It actually only goes in one direction, so if it doesn't work, it means you stop up and try again. So my connector wasn't out enough. That's the problem. So here you go. When you push it in, you can see it's flush. Therefore, you know you, you did it right. Now we need to put our five screws back in. This is your five Phillips head screwdrivers.
now that I'm done, I'm going to put the filter back in and test the vacuum. So you can put the battery and the filter back in at this stage and test it to see if it works. So I'm pressing it and as you can see, it's lighting up, so therefore it's working. You actually can hear the sound as well. So now I'm going to remove the battery and continue reassembling. We need to put our bin guy rail back in. And we're going to need our two Phillips head screws. Now that's done, we're going to put our bin back in. So make sure your bin's open. You have to guide it in the rail. Once it's guided, you can just push it back and it should go in. Close the lid and that's it. We'll put our filter back in and put our battery in and we can test it. As you can see, it's working and it's on. That's it.